Remember, remember the 5th of November. In a dystopian near future version of Great Britain, the Norse Fire Party has replaced the old government and implemented a religious dictatorship under its leader Chancellor Sutler. The film begins with a young woman named Evie preparing to go out for the night. Her movements mirror a cloaked activist who's preparing to go out for a very different reason. They both watch the self-proclaimed voice of London spouting off his fascist ideology and listing off the minorities he wants gone from the country. Having had quite enough of it, Evie shuts off the program and heads out the door. Since the town is currently under curfew she avoids being spotted by authorities but is stopped in an alley by a few men. When they become physical she pulls out pepper spray but they reveal themselves to be members of the secret police called Fingerman. She begins to plead with them for mercy when the masked man appears in the alley. With superhuman strength and the protection of his guy Fox mask he dispatches the three Fingermen with ease. Using a theatrical performance of wordplay the man begins introducing himself to Evie in the longest possible way as V. He calls himself a musician and invites her to a nearby rooftop where they have a clear view of the whole city, as the clock strikes midnight bringing about November 5th. V begins to talk about Guy Fawkes and his attempt to blow up his oppressors in the early 1600s, being captured beneath parliament and being hung along with his conspirators. Music starts playing throughout the streets over the loudspeakers drawing crowds from their homes. And at the moment of the crescendo Lady Justice explodes sending V laughing hysterically while Evie watches on in horror. Following the attack the Norse Fire 5 meet with the head Chancellor Sutler. Brian's the ears and is told to put the song by Tchaikovsky on the bandless never to be heard again. Conrad's the eyes and says his cameras picked up both suspects but with V wearing a mask they only have the girl to search for, which the nose inspector Finch is tasked with doing. The finger creed he's told to continue having his fingermen question the locals, while the mouth rogers the head of the British television network and portrays the explosion as just planned demolition. Evie works with him as an assistant at the BTN and apologizes to talk show host Gordon for missing dinner. She delivers boxes to the costume department which turn out to be fox masks and black cloaks, when V walks into the station with a bomb strapped to his chest. He disengages the elevator and orders the television crew to broadcast his message to every TV in London. Finch is already on his way to the station to question Evie but finds the elevator jammed and everyone evacuating. They then watch as V appears on every TV in London, addressing the public and admitting to the explosion as a means to end their oppression. He invites everyone to join him one year from now in front of Parliament where he promises to give them a 5th of November they'll never forget. Police gain access to the room and shoot the masked man but he's just a decoy, as the entire crew begin to emerge in the same costume. Two exit the room with one saying the other is the terrorist, but they remove his mask revealing security guard Fred and being blindsided by the real V, who kills every officer in the hall without remorse. Finch is in a booth with Roger lending moral support as he successfully disarms V's explosive. As V makes his escape he's stopped by Finch's partner Dominic, who fails to see Evie sneak up behind and mace him before he blindly knocks her unconscious and has returned the favor. Once regaining consciousness, Evie's surrounded by books in an old building filled with exotic art, all considered banned by Sutler's government. While inspecting a jukebox V appears and welcomes her to the Shadow Gallery, a place in which she's a prisoner of for the next year, as Creedy's fingerman will make her reveal the location should he let her go before then. Angered by this she runs back to her room to cool off, then returns later to apologize finding V in the kitchen cooking up eggs. She notices his hands are badly burned but he just puts his gloves on and serves breakfast. After reaffirming Evie on his plans to destroy Parliament, he reminds her that their government should be afraid of them instead of the other way around. The next piece of propaganda put out claims that the terrorist V's been shot dead but it's trusted by less than half the public. That night Lewis has a visit from V after he uses Evie's ID to gain access to the building. When V calls Lewis commander he suddenly recognizes him from his days at a detention center, but is later found dead with a rose on his chest by Finch and Roger who discuss how they're going to cover it up. Being woken up by a racket in the shadow gallery, Evie finds V sparring a suit of armor hyped up on watching the Count of Monte Cristo. They watch the whole thing together, when afterwards Evie catches a report claiming Lewis's death to be an untimely heart attack. Evie's shaken by V murdering him but he reminds her of the fingerman he killed to protect her saying that it can be used for justice and he'll do it again. Evie decides to tell V about her younger brother dying of a virus and her parents protesting the government, until they were eventually taken in the middle of the night by Creedy's bagmen. She offers V her help in whatever he's doing next which inspired by her story he agrees to let her. Looking into Lewis's past, Inspector Finch finds out that he was one of the richest men in London after his time spent as a commander at the now defunct Lark Hill Detention Center. He discovers that a priest named Anthony was the single highest paid employee of the center and is currently a bishop. Anthony walks into his room where Evie stands waiting for him dressed up how he likes them. Originally tasked with seducing the crooked holy man to get him alone, Evie attempts to warn him as she's been planning an escape from V all along. 
The bishop doesn't believe her thinking it's a game and begins getting handsy, when she kicks him off and V enters. She apologizes and runs away leaving Anthony alone with V, where he's killed and found with a rose just like Lewis. This time Creedy shows up himself having been sent by Sutler who believes it to be an inside job. He tells Finch to drop his questions on Larkhill and that he is under investigation himself due to his Irish heritage. Later when Finch shows the rose to the coroner Delia, she says that the breed is a Scarlet Carson and is thought to be extinct. Meanwhile Evie seeks sanctuary with Gordon who takes her in, and as a show of trust he takes her into a hidden room filled with a collection of blacklisted items. He reveals himself to also be gay but invites women like Evie to his home like the other night to hide it from the fingerman. Finch finds a list of all the officials that worked at Lark Hill, discovering the last one alive to be Delia having once worked as the facility's chemist. Just then V emerges from the shadows in the doctor's bedroom where she acts relieved that he's come to kill her, having lived with the guilt of experimenting on the patients at Lark Hill ever since. Despite seeing that she's genuinely remorseful, V still needs his revenge and reveals that he already injected her with poison while she slept but that it will kill her painlessly. Once again Finch arrives too late but finds her diary recounting everything that happened at Lark Hill. He's told by Sutler to destroy it but instead reads the whole thing which chronicles Delia's work at the center. 20 years ago she began experimenting with injections on London's vagrants delivered to her by Fingerman. All of her tests proved fatal except in the case of patient 5 who developed powers, and who on November 5th during a fire that destroyed the lab escaped despite not even having eyes. That night Gordon shows Evie his latest special, where his comedy show uses a Sutler impersonator to make fun of the Chancellor. After another actor dressed as V humiliates him, they're both shot down while the entire public laugh hysterically. Despite him not expecting any repercussions and telling his guests to relax, Evie's forced to hide under the bed and watch again as Gordon's beaten by Creedy and taken away by his fingerman just like her parents. She climbs out the window to escape but is captured and has a bag placed over her head. When the bag's removed she's in an interrogation room being questioned on the location of the terrorist. Refusing to answer, she's put into processing where she's shaved and hosed down before being kept in a small cell. After being tortured for some time she discovers a small note in the wall written on toilet paper. It chronicles the life of a lesbian named Valerie who was disowned by her parents for bringing home a girlfriend. One day on a film set she met the love of her life and moved to London with Ruth. When the Norse fire took control of the government and began rounding people up, Ruth was taken and Valerie never saw her again. Eventually they came for her as well and put her through processing before she was sent off to Lark Hill, where she died along with all of the other failed experiments. The next morning Evie's once again questioned by the official under threat of death, but when she refuses he tells her that she's now completely free. Confused she exits the cell to find the guard a dummy and that she's been in the shadow gallery all along. V explains that he got to Evie before the fingerman and put her through what he did to remove her fears, bringing her to a point where she'd rather die than tell her enemies anything. He takes her to the rooftop and watches as she steps out in the rain and mirrors his emergence from the flames. Once back in the gallery, Evie goes to give V the note back thinking he wrote it but he shows her a shrine dedicated to Valerie surrounded by the Scarlet Carsons that he places on his victims' bodies. Realizing now why he's doing what he's doing, Evie's allowed to leave as V trusts she's too strong to give in to the Fingerman's interrogation. While looking into Creedy's original Fingerman Finch is contacted by one of them who organizes a meeting to reveal the truth. The stranger tells him that Sutler created biological weapons at Lark Hill in the name of national security, but in secret released viruses on the public killing thousands. When they needed a savior Sutler swooped in and magically provided a cure getting him elected chancellor, where he's enforced his fanatical ways ever since. The familiar man then slinks away into the darkness, and when Finch receives information that the original informant was found dead he realizes it was V in disguise all along. That night Creedy is visited in his home by V who proposes he betrays Sutler and takes his position as Chancellor, which the power-hungry finger obviously accepts. On November 4 thousands of Guy Fawkes masks and costumes are delivered throughout London. One girl proudly wears her costume on the streets but is shot dead by a fingerman, who produces his Norse fire badge to the public but they don't care and beat him to death. Just like V wanted Sutler's society begins to crumble with riots breaking out across the country. Through the year we've kept cutting to the Norse fire elites being demanded results by Sutler, but this is the last time as Creedy's finally over the Chancellor's threats. That night Evie returns to the Shadow Gallery and is asked by V to dance on the eve of his revolution. While dancing she asks to see his face but he refuses saying the face under the mask doesn't reflect the man. He then leads her to an abandoned subway tunnel beneath the gallery and reveals to her a train filled with explosives. Leaving the decision to destroy Parliament with Evie, she attempts to persuade V not to leave but he has a date with Creedy. As Sutler shown on a broadcast throughout an empty London, V meets Creedy in an abandoned subway where the finger held up his end of the bargain. V places a Scarlet Carson in the begging Sutler's pocket letting Creedy shoot him dead and assume command. 
The new chancellor then demands V remove his mask but he refuses by killing the approaching fingerman. V tells Creedy that his men have one chance to kill him or else he slaughters them all during their reload, so the entire room opens fire with a barrage of bullets but V stays standing seemingly unaffected. He then throws his knives killing the men on either side of Creedy and begins making his way around the firing line killing every one of them before they can get a reload in. With only Creedy left he wonders aloud why V won't die, being told by him that it's because beneath the masks an idea and ideas are bulletproof. V snaps his neck and staggers back removing a bloody piece of body armor that allowed some bullets through. He makes it back to the train and collapses next to Evie, confessing that he fell in love with her after decades of feeling nothing but revenge. V didn't believe he could even feel love again and tells Evie that it's the most beautiful thing she could have given him. He dies and is placed on the train surrounded in roses, while Finch finds his way into the subway and discovers Evie at the controls to the train. He tells her to step away but she refuses saying that the country needs more than just a building, it needs hope. Finch agrees and the train send on its path, as the two go to the roof of the gallery for a better view of parliament. Meanwhile the entire town's wearing their Guy Fawkes costumes and begin to march on the armed guard enforcing curfew around parliament. With Creedy and Sutler both dead they receive no orders and are forced to allow the people to walk straight past them. Just then the train reaches parliament blowing the building up as Tchaikovsky's overture plays through loudspeakers. The citizens remove their masks revealing all those who wished for freedom and died so others could receive it. When asked who V was, Evie tells the inspector that he was all of us. And the movie ends. Remember, remember the 5th of November, the gunpowder treason and plot. I know of no reason why the gunpowder treason should ever be forgot. So you made it. I appreciate your time. I couldn't have done it without you. Tell your mother I said thanks. This valorous visitation of a bygone vexation stands vivified and has vowed to vanquish these venal and virulent vermin vanguarding vice and vouchsafing the violently vicious and voracious.